suppression of the use of marijuana and of the forces lurking behind it are the most important jobs this department is now engaged in. In 1930, the records on marijuana in the Washington office of the Narcotics Division scarcely filled a small folder like this. Today, they fill cabinets. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, Coloradians, and everyone that's smart enough to listen from the outside. It's one of the most amazing plants we've ever discovered. The pot party, the trippers, the grasshoppers, the hip ones, all gathered in secrecy and flying high as a cup. Please! Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another week of Stolen Depetit with your host, as always, it's me, Kip. To my left, I got CB. How are you, CB? I'm doing great, you know, coming off a big holiday weekend. Um, but yeah, I had a good time going to some parties, doing all the 4th of July things. Hell yeah, I love to hear it. Well, we've got a great episode today, and we got Queen Evitha back on the ones and twos. How are you, QE? QE? Yeah, I'm okay. Did, did Just you, okay? Yeah. What did we do for the 4th? Do we have a book report today? No book report. Do you eat a hot dog? I, I don't eat hot dogs, so no. What the fuck? Hold on. Are that we was this? in Did our... We, didn't I've we have that this. on our... A disqualifier? Yeah, that was in the original interview. Oh, Did you lie? Maybe. I can't Did remember. you lie on your resume and say you eat hot dogs and you don't? <laughs> I don't eat hot dogs. Okay, do you have a hamburger? Yeah, I had a hamburger. Okay. Okay. What, yeah. what were the toppings on the hamburger? Where do you go with? That's a great question, Chris. There's like ketchup and cheese, lettuce, tomato. Ketchup, cheese, lettuce, tomato, no onion? No onion. No onion. mayo or mustard? No. Okay. Okay. Well, that's fine. Look, we don't judge. If it's at a barbecue, that's what I stick to. Like drive through, good times. They they do mustard and mayo, I think, and I'm fine with that too. Okay. Keep but when you're fun. making your own at a Usually barbecue. Usually I'm just like ketchup. I don't think of doing anything else. I'm just like ketchup, tomato, lettuce. So did you go to a barbecue or something? Yeah. What were what were come what were the sides? Did you bring anything? Yeah, did you bring that Jello thing that no. you scared everybody with last Everyone year? Everyone liked it, so shut up. <laughs> um, they just they needed like chips, so I just brought chips. They what kind of chips? Sour cream and onion. That's fair. Green bag of lays. Uh, the ridges, the ruffles. Okay, ruffles. well, that's a that's a cheddar sour cream kind of operation if you're going to go ruffles but hey look it's all right wow. we don't judge here on this podcast really yes, yeah you just did i do it all the time i judge the shit out of everybody on the internet too but we'll talk about that and more on today's podcast before we dive into all the nitty-gritty <laughs> holiday recaps and more let's give a shout out to our friends and sponsors of the pod our friends over at pine melon i don't know if y'all watched me uh cook in my underwear this weekend it was not a thirst trap it's the opposite of a thirst trap but i cringe. yeah it was a cringe trap um but you know what was a thirst trap was the fact that they have fucking scallops on their menu right now and it's an unbelievable deal you get 18 of them for like 25 dollars. i had a couple of chefs who had signed up using our promo code stoned and got those puppies for free it was free surf and turf for a lot of folks that were grilling and chilling this weekend thanks to our friends at pine melon they work with 200 plus local purveyors right here in Colorado and obviously have to outsource some of those things like the scallops, your pineapples, maybe the occasional cherry from Michigan, but all the same. They work with a litany of farmers and meat purveyors, fruit vendors, grains, greens, and everything in betweens. You can get them all over at Pine Melon and you can get them delivered to your door. So maybe you don't want to put the kid in the car seat. The car's hot as shit. You just got off work. You're tired. You just want to go home and already have your groceries there for you. Pine Melon is here to help. There's nothing worse than a piping hot car in the summertime and having to get bustling kids in and out of it. That's why Pine Melon's here to help. They're here to help the family that's so gosh dang busy that they need a little bit of help whether it's just taking a little bit off the plate so they can put more on their plate. You see what I did there? I did. That's a double entendre. Uh, if you're looking and trying to sign up, first-time shoppers, you get $60 in free groceries using promo code STONED. That's it. That's all you have to do. Order, fire away. They'll drop them off at your doorstep. They have two-hour windows. They can have stuff over to you in 90 minutes if you catch them right. I'm doing a little medi this week, shout out to Susie Vidal. She's been talking about her whipped feta. So I fired in a tahini, feta, Greek yogurt, lemon, dill. I'm going to whip this shit out of that with a little food processor this week. A light bite with a little pita. 
love it. I'm so excited about it. You will be excited about working with them. And if you're not a first time user, don't worry. Check your emails. Sometimes they go into the spam. They send you like they had 20% off for all repeat guests, customers this week as well. So they take care of everybody, us included. We're thankful to have them as our sponsor of the pod. And obviously, don't forget Seed Money Consulting. I'll do that full ad read in the middle after we do a little bit of our conversation today. But I'm excited about it, and I don't want to do too long of an ad read. All right, let's go back to the conversation that was. Chris, what did you do for the fourth? Did you get too drunk? Did you make a fool of yourself? No, actually, I did not. I kept it pretty tame. Uh, that doesn't on, sound like you. On the actual fourth, I uh, played a little round of golf. And then since I had to work on Friday... Um, just came back home and uh, obviously grilled some burgers, which I got to say, I picked up these uh, like patties with a little bit of blue cheese mixed in with them. Just did a quick stop at Whole Foods and they turned out really, really damn good. Okay. So just traditional do they have burgers. Like, do they melt like at the proper ratio? Because I see some that have like the little cheddar slivers in some of those like patties already, but it always kind of feels like if you like your burger a little medium like does the cheese like still have that hardened factor to it because it's been sitting inside the meat and it's a little colder or does it feel like gooey and drippy yeah i think with the blue cheese you know because it's different it was more like crumbles that were like mixed in so they all kind of like it all just kind of melted in okay so it was kind of in that concept not like a juicy lucy yeah and i think sometimes like the the cheddar ones i know you're talking about because they had those but I feel like those are a little thicker and they don't really melt all the time. That's my problem yeah. with them. These ones worked out. Well, I, I mean, we heard surprised. we heard Eve's recap of what she likes on her burger, but a black and blue burger, it does tickle the pickle. Did you get into anything else besides that? Yeah, I joined some friends for a big uh, big time party on Friday night. That one that one went off the rails for a little bit, but that was fun. We did Shout out to Cosmic Bars. <laughs> yes, yeah. Man. <laughs> Those things work. I remember I, I handed one to a buddy, and he was like, wait a second, is this too much? And before I could even answer him, he had already eaten it. So I was like, nah, that, that seemed right to me. Um, but then Saturday, <laughs> we went out to uh, first Rockies game of the year for me. Oh, okay. Which, you know, we just got those rooftop GA tickets, which... If you get there early, it's awesome because they have the cheap beers before the first pitch. You get like $3 beers in the right field lounge. It's a great deal. And And the tickets are dirt cheap because our team fucking sucks. No, and what what I did, we got, uh, I think it came out to like $44 for two tickets, but you got a $6 concession stand voucher with each ticket. Okay, so they're they're finding new ways to get them into the stadium. Yeah, yeah. So you could just go up there and get a big drink. Um, God man, forbid they just put a quality product on the fucking field. Yeah, I mean, that sucks. But goddamn, you forget, like, or if you haven't been to the stadium in a while, you always forget those views and how cool of a stadium it actually is. And I didn't realize it's one of the older stadiums. In, in baseball the, yeah. at this point? Well, I mean, we've done a little bit. Obviously, the right field is a a recent add-on in the last 15 or so years. And, uh, you know, being that where they are, you can't really demolish again as they were kind of developing that stadium as downtown was truly getting developed. But it it holds up if the product on the field would do the same. And then they turn out some – they've turned some of those vendors from just being airmark bullshit like that. Like Helton's Bad Daddy Burgers or whatever is fine, and but they have some quality snacks in there now. I went. I, I just went for the the basic stadium dog. Yeah, I, the Glizzy. Yeah, you have to. And well, that's not a bad weekend. It and sounds then, like you did all things. Yeah, and then finished up with uh, Highland Square Farmers Market yesterday. Oh, okay. And, and I gotta say, like Hearst Bakery, when they show up and they have like some of their bread products out there, that seeded sourdough bread absolutely slaps. So we made some tomato sandos. They yesterday. still have their location right outside of Rhino, don't yeah. they? Yeah. Okay. Or I guess right in the middle of Rhino. But yeah, they definitely slap. Their bread game is strong. Yeah. So that was about it on Eve, the weekend. Eve, give us a book report. I know you read something, you nerd. What'd you do? What'd you do? I didn't finish anything. Oh, okay. Sorry. Ooh, I started a book. You this must have had too much fun. Ooh. Wait, what kind? I'm sorry. Uh, it's that. Uh, um, it's the one by uh, Anthony Bourdain's producer okay. in the woods or or the woods or something. I can't remember. But I just uh, started it yesterday, and it's just written from the perspective of the guy who was 
his producer and with him for a long time, like I think over like 16 years. Um, so it's, it's reading pretty damn, uh, pretty damn good so far. All right. That, we'll, we'll have to get you to report back for us if that's the case. Eve, you kind of gave us a rundown. You did a little grill and chill for the fourth. Anything else worth talking about? Mm. Ooh. She's got a smile on her there face. Is like she's got something. Share it. Share. Share. I mean, I watched The Bear. Oh, oh you guys okay. What did you think about the third season? I'm not. I'm okay. kind of out I don't on that like... show. Everybody else is very in. It doesn't do it for me. Really? I just, it doesn't do it for me. I, don't I just I didn't like they were very split up this season. Like they weren't really in the restaurant that much. Well, so I felt like this season was kind of giving you insight like into more of the individual people. Yeah, that's what they were and doing. And I will but... say I will say like I don't know. I mean, I'm not like super into the show. I think it's a good show, but that one episode on um I forget her name, um the kind of like I don't know if she's technically Hispanic. Um, what's her? Do you I don't know, know her name, but the but that episode was where one, she was looking for work and walked yeah, in. yeah, that was nice. That was one yeah, of the yeah. best episodes of that entire show. Yeah, I can see that. That's fair. I mean, I I tried at about halfway. through I thought season all the quick two. pace would like keep your brain. After season two, I was just kind of out. It just seems wow. like it's very much like Shameless. It's like, oh, every time we're just like, it's very anxiety filled and we fuck up and it's because of our own actions that we have the repercussions of these actions. And it's just like tiresome. It's like, okay, I've seen this episode like nine times now. Like, Mm. you know, like, oh, we messed up in the first 12 to 15 minutes, but don't worry, we'll have a great solid resolution. And then a little bit of the larger plot comes to like fruition in the process. And I was like, fuck, if I just wanted to keep watching Shameless on the south side of Chicago, this is just a reiteration of that. And so I'm just burnt. I got burnt out on it. And I was like, I get it that he's very handsome and Maddie (laughs) is hysterical and the lady is hot. But it's like, it's just like the same fucking thing over and over again. Maddie is So now I'm on a love island. Maddie is hysterical. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, but so is this like watching him just be Maddie on a social (laughs) page. It's like now I have to go see it like bits and pieces of it in like two minute flashes. But I mean, I liked the first season, you know, I thought it was kind of whimsical and funny. I was like, Oh, I remember working in a hectic kitchen where nothing would go right. And then it was like, this is the same fucking thing as shameless just in restaurant vibe. Like it just didn't do it for me. So I've reverted back to shitty reality television while everybody else is still glazing them. So shout out to Jeremy Allen, Wright. We love white. white. Come on the podcast anytime. We love to talk about After you shit. talk shit. Yeah. I still I mean, like I, it. I mean, it's kind of stressful to watch sometimes or like... Your hands sweat a little bit. You're like, like well, you wouldn't be in that situation if you and, weren't a fucking idiot. Yeah, and this season, he's not listening to anyone, like making a different dish every night. Like a different... He makes a different menu every night. Even I was like, come on, dude. Like you can't do that with these chefs who are like used to making sandwiches and shit. But he'd make like this... And he wasn't listening to his partner. So it was kind of like a bummer season. You know what I mean? It was like, what are you doing, dude? Like you're like not listening to anyone and being stupid. Like, I don't know. Well, I like Eve's television reviews. They probably get more attraction than when I talk about Love Island and Top Chef season nine. So do you watch like the UK version or the American? Um, the guy that's talking Scottish. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Who hosts it. <sighs> I don't know either. You should know if it's an American. Oh, do they have accents or not? Some of them do. The host <laughs> does. I'm assuming the American one, they're all American. And the UK? No, they're have not. And the UK, they, there's a mix. Yeah, I don't these think they are a mix. Mar- so these may, I don't know. I, don't I was know. obviously put onto this by somebody else. Wow. Um, and now I'm like, kind of like tuning in while I'm cooking. I'm like, what's going on over there with Sandra and Joe? Like, whatever. Yeah, I don't it's know. It's terrible I fucking I just heard television. the UK one's like way better than the American one, but I have like no interest. I started, I, I, I peeped that. a couple episodes. Steph was watching the Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. Oh. So I peeped a couple episodes off that. Ooh, is it good? It's kind of good. Were you doing it as like a peeking in the perversion way, like Trump no, or just a, lot, it, a lady's just, locker room? No. Like, okay, now I'm kind of intrigued. No, I was. I mean, it's an intense process. And like, I didn't realize, like, I thought... They get paid minimum wage? Oh, they don't make, they don't make anything. But I didn't realize, like, if you, let's say you were a Cowboys cheerleader in the previous year, you can get cut this year. Like, you... 
I mean, it's consistent. The squad, you have to come out there and show up, or you may not be on the 52-man roster. Um, I, to be fair, I, I did a fair amount of TV watching. Uh, Thursday, did a grill and chill for the fourth. I feel like, you know, if you're not literally getting out into the woods, like, it's not like the weekend to just go, like, bumbling around town as much. Like, it's a perfect time to just light the grill and eat all that. I over-ordered, overcooked. And so I ate leftovers for a large part of the weekend. I alluded to the fact that I cooked in my underwear Saturday night while I had Kip night, where I just had the house to myself, drank a bottle of red, seared some scallops. I made uh, Jules Robichon Palm Puree, you know, that butter. The ratio calls for two to one. So if you have a thousand grams or a kilo of potatoes, then it would require 496 grams of butter. Chris, it was the least healthy thing I have ever eaten. And I eat Popeye's or Bird Call or fucking McDonald's on occasion. These bomb pure, these mashed taters are the hands down most unhealthy thing I've put in my mouth in 2024. And I'll eat any drug somebody gives me. And those are hands down healthier than these potatoes that I had this weekend. Um, and then I also hit up the Cherry Creek's Art Festival. Yeah, how was it? It's fucking cool as shit. Yeah. Obviously, you know, we've had friends that are like that are, the food scene out there is pretty solid as well. They have a lot of local businesses, both from food trucks and just like uh, like pop up stands, so you can get everything from Greek eats to nudes. I obviously teed off on Lady in the Wild because after eating like a gluttonous piece of shit for four or five days, I needed a little bit fresher, leaner, you know, bites and ingredients, and it it didn't disappoint. The art, on the other hand, is just so ungodly expensive. I'm just there for perusing, like. Until I hit the lottery or sell this goddamn company, there's nothing in Cherry Creek that we could afford, or Cherry Creek Arts I could afford. But it's fun to go look around. It it's fun. just like going to the you know the museums around town, but you get to see artists from around the country. And on Sunday the weather was piping, and by piping I mean like actually nice instead of 95 degrees on that hard black cement. So it was wonderful. Um, thanks again to the team from Hey Create Oh Hey Creative for giving me some access badges so I could go in and grab a cocktail, get a little reprieve from the heat. But um, it's a blast, and it's a who's who out there. You know, there's some really nice folks. You got to see a lot of our friends out there as well. So I kept it very docile. I didn't get too drunk any day. I smoked a hell amount of pot um, and just kind of hung out in the air conditioner for the most part. I forgot to mention, I watched like five Nick Cage movies yesterday. Uh, Which one? Name them. Right, yeah. uh, the Rock, to start with. Is that a newer one? I don't know what that, that one is. It's the called Rock The Rock. The Rock movie with Sean Connery, Connery where, oh. where Ed Harris. The, I actually had That's that on. Old. Was okay. that on Hulu? No, it was on E! yesterday. Uh, so, so I was like reading the paper, watching The Rock, and then after The Rock, Con Air came on. And then after Con Air came on, Gone in 60 Seconds came on. And then after Gone in 60 Seconds came on, National Treasure came on. It was just... Okay, Power Rank, The Rock, Con Air, Gone in 60 Seconds. Fuck, Mary kill. Uh, let's see. Mary, Gone in 60... Or no, Mary, The Rock, Fuck, Gone in 60 Seconds, and Kill Con Air. Okay, so that's kind of crazy because the team from... Con Air, is, it's a loaded cast, but that accent is atrocious. It is so bad. Put the bunny. <laughs> I told him to put the bunny in the, the box. box. I mean, as an Alabaman, and he's like cosplaying as one of you. Um, I'm not going to kill you, old timer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's got that ethos, you know, the moral compass, but he's stuck in the air. He's got John Cusack in that one. He's got John Malkovich, Steve Buscemi. Like, that's a who's Dave who. Dave Chappelle. <laughs> I forgot about Pinball. <laughs> oh, man. We should do that every week, just in our movie recaps. Yeah, that's exactly what we should talk about. I don't hate that combo. I watched Hell or High Water with Chris Pine oh, and Jeff so Daniels. Oh, I had a little Jeff Daniels spiel because I also caught Big Lebowski one night, too. So. Dude, Hell or High Water was really good. I think it's the best Western in the last 20 years. Have you Your seen Your thoughts, that? Eve? Fuck. I haven't seen it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, it's a gr- that's a great movie. That you should you go sh- see the one in theater now if you want to see a western. That 
Uh, the Kevin Costner, Costner one. No, I'm not going to spoil. I mean, I know he That's fronted all of one. his money, but I think like, it's a two parter it too. I think it's like a three parter. Go, go, go! Support Kevin. Come on, he just went through an expensive divorce. Help him out. Help That's him out. The problem own, is that like everybody in there is going to have like a chawl in. You're going to see a bunch of those red hats fucking just like peeking over the chairs. I don't have any what interest. Does that mean? But it's just a fucking here. It's everybody that wears bedazzled jeans I, and. uh Likes to complain, like roll coal, okay. a bunch of trucks in the parking lot. I don't lot. So, understand any of the things you just said. That was just okay. like, okay, okay. yeah. Uh, uh, so, team outing, yeah. team outing, maybe the new Twisters. I think that's coming I'll out in the that. next week or so. Shout out to Bill Paxton. Well, he rests in peace. If it's a team outing, you have to go. Mm. It's either that or you have to read a whole book and give us a report. Okay, I'd rather I'll read. <laughs> All right, no, you have to give a full book report next Tuesday. <laughs> like uh-huh. at, least, at least 500 words. Okay. We want to see it. That's going to be like a whole year's worth of her commentary. She gives us like sixty words an episode. You're going to have her give five hundred words. Well, on when a does book? when does the Deadpool? When does that one come out? Or is that already the twenty seventh? I think it's later in July. So should we do that as a team outing? Will you attend? We'll get a I'm large gonna, bag of popcorn. We'll I'm going to see it for sure. All right, we'll go to that one as the team. Well, we'll I, I want to know if Twister's, go Twister's good Twister's though. Too. Like, I just don't want to see it really if it's not. Like, I'm just kind of suspicious. I'm like. Kind of like, what if it's like Top Gun Maverick where it's like, oh baby, it slaps. Yeah, I didn't see Top Gun. I imagine Twisters is going to slap because the graphics have only gotten better. Well, I don't. I'm not worried about the graphics as much as like, how do you replace Bill Paxton, Philip Seymour Hoffman? I mean, Helen Hunt's not dead, but. You know, she's probably not present. And then, you know, Aunt May or whatever her name was. I mean, there was a lot of things that pulled to our heartstrings. And I also get told that he's my doppelganger, both in terms of visual and audio, on a weekly basis. Like, people, first-time listeners to podcasts, are like, anyone ever tell you you sound like Bill Paxton? And it's like, yeah, I hear that a lot. So I have a special place in my heart for Twister 1, but I think the, Twister 2 will be good. I'm not seeing the look of Bill Paxton. Well, he got either. he aged and had a stroke, so hopefully I don't have that. But maybe it's the earlier years. You're trending toward that. It's true. <laughs> it's very true. It's much butter and well, yeah, clogged that's, yeast. That's now. a clogged artery waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. All right, well, so we are in the dog days of summer and talking about things like going to the movies to break the heat. This is the last topic of today's episode. Chris, I want to get a couple tips for the listeners that if you're coming out to Colorado, whether it's for Red Rocks concerts or you're coming for a bachelor or bachelorette party, or you're here for a wedding, like we have a lot of friends coming out this weekend to join us for a wedding. Let's talk a little bit about places to beat the heat. It's going to be fucking a hundred degrees this weekend. And so we would recommend getting the hell out of town. Obviously you can do things like go to golden or go to Boulder and do the float. Even though I think the Boulder Creek is, it was closed because of snow melt and runoff was a little too high. I mean, that thing's aggressive it regardless. Gets, yeah, like, it's you not need to wear a, sip, a helmet. It's not a sipping sesh, <laughs> but there's a lot of cool towns that folks can go to, to not only eat well, but also have some fun in the process. So I wanted to pick your brain. You give us a couple locations i'm going to float a couple locations and we'll do some recommendations of restaurants along the way in that process um and i'll start as an example how about that show you a town that i thoroughly recommend like the go to Ore instead of going to Vail or we've already glazed aspen so yeah. we don't have to suck the how, how long of a drive comparably it's, a bear. it's, it's like, like six hours it's a to, little t- it's to a t- to Ure. It's about five, six hours. It's not a close okay, trek, yeah. but if you're trying to get out of town, it's still going to be warm up there, but they have fun side-by-side slash ATV tours that you can do, like up through mining country. They have very fun hikes you can do both in the town as well as they have things like hot springs and schwitzes you could do with the river, but the place that I thoroughly recommend is called The Western. Is that where it, you had the burger? No, this place I had this unbelievable, like, fucking tomahawk, like, bone-in. I can't remember. I remember when y'all went down there and you mentioned someplace. It's so gorgeous. It's so pretty. And it's a little bit more price-friendly than somewhere like your Tellurides. So while we love Telluride as well, like... Blues and Brews is coming up. You've probably already missed out on, you know, Bluegrass happened a couple of weeks ago. But Ure is just a fun little smaller, quainter community. And this hotel and restaurant at The Western is a fucking 
awesome little endeavor to do. Uh, you can do it for a li- It's cheaper than the, the other Bayer, you know, like going to the other side of the million dollar highway, but you can also take that over to Silverton if you wanted to. It's a fun little place you can experience if you're trying to get a little bit more of the Colorado, you know, environment. Thoroughly recommend Ure. Now you give a town and a restaurant that you fuck with. Okay. Um, I mean, if we want to get up into like the cooler climate, but you don't want to go like that extra like 40 miles yeah. to Vail. Um, I mean, stop by Breck. There's tons of shit going on up, up in that town. They use it like, especially like Lake Dillon, you know, there's tons of stuff to do there. I know you can rent sup, bo- sup boards. I'm sure you can rent kayaks. You can do anything you want in that area. Not to mention, they got, like, obviously we've mentioned it before, but one of the favorite breweries, Outer Range, and they have a little fried chicken spot in there, um, kind of like Korean-style fried chicken, which is banging. And if you're up there, like, they have other concert venues around town. Um, And then also, I mean, I'm sure you might have to plan ahead for this now, but Rootstock, um, I mean... I mean, how can you not? I mean, yeah. Matty Valter just wins, you yeah. know, best chef in the mountain region. We were just up there eating, and I couldn't agree more. Between golf, water adventures, for those that are dumb enough to go hiking, you can hike. Like, there's a lot to do, and you don't have to deal with as much of the the traffic if you're sneaking up on a Friday. Yeah. And if you're trying to camp, they have BLM land on the backside, kind of, if you want to be over there, kind of in the South Park region, a fair play, like... But Breck's a fun little destination, and with Matt having those nicer restaurants in town, you can. it's still approachable in t- terms of, like, you don't have to get super fancy and dolled up. And he has two spots, not yeah. just Rootstock, but Red, Radid, Radicchio, Rad, Radicato? Radicato? Radic- yeah, something like that. I know that's, 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 up, Yeah, that's, one of the mo- that's more like Italian pasta focus. But I think, like, that's the thing is you don't have to do, like, a tasting menu, which – by the way, is actually pretty reasonably priced, and you get a bunch of food, but you can order all the cart and have a couple of dishes that you share and get out of there not Got too bad. The bank. That's a good call, and I like you getting a little closer to town because not everybody's trying to take Friday off and need all of Sunday to get back. I've got one that will help you avoid a little bit of the traffic that's also not too far of a trek. I'm going to send folks up to Lyons, Colorado, Chris. I was glazing Marigold Restaurant, Theo Atley Spot. It's still in my top three restaurants I've eaten in Colorado. It's fucking immaculate. But they also have the Planet Bluegrass uh, venue right there. They have these little tiny homes right there on the river that you can rent and then stay out there and do fun stuff. Like they have like volleyball courts and like a fun little fire pit. And if you maybe are like, oh, I want to do that outdoor shit that Kip thinks is terrible estes park is just up the road yeah you know and then boulder's right back there so it's an easy drive you don't have to deal with the i-70 crowd unbelievable dining at marigold they're open i think definitely through the weekend five o'clock onward so if you wanted to time it where maybe you stop there on friday on your trek up to rocky mountain national park it's better food than anything you'll find in estes and it rivals some of the best food in Colorado at, in its entirety. Like Theo and Marigold's, they need to be on everybody's short list. But Lions has a lot of fun little, you know, quirks. And f- they have like a pinball bar. And they have is, a bunch of dispensaries up there. So you can have some fun with it. And, you know, the river runs right by so you can stay cool in the process too. Is the OG Oscar Blues still up there? Yeah, it is. Okay, because they have like an arcade underneath They have. Them. That's where it is. Yeah, okay. the restaurant bar is still open. Oscar Blues. Blues Denver may have had the worst food I've ever had. You remember that spot that used to be next to Three Fisted Mario's right there on Market Street downtown? Yeah, and that's weird because it was the, so bad. The wings in Lions, I remember back in the day when I was living in Boulder when I first moved out here, we went up there and like the wings there were good. Because the yeah. one in Lions is really like small. It's a little more quaint. Yeah, yeah. they're trying to go like this Cajun route. And I'm obviously a snob when it comes to Southern food. Very pretentious because I can cook it better than anybody else in this city. Yeah, um, yeah it's just facts. I'm better at it than anybody. And if you want to come on and talk about it, I will. But I'm right. 
Um, and when they did it in the Denver scene, I was like, I'm going to fucking throw this gumbo at the wall. I was so angry. And it was right behind my former office down there. And so I was like, what a waste. Because it had a really cool vibe. And obviously, the beers are delicious. But the food was so bad. But if you're looking for good food and you find yourself up in Lyons this summer, you've got to try Marigold. That's my next recommendation, Lyons, Colorado. You know, and I mean, I guess if you're looking to stay like closer into town, but you want to get out and like get wet to beat the heat, like Golden's a great spot to tube. Um, those those rapids aren't too bad. Or you can go out to Littleton and hit up um, uh, Breckenridge Brewery out there. And then you like do that little, uh, I don't know what that body of water is right there. But you is it can, the Platte? Maybe. <laughs> is it really? I don't know. Fuck it. <laughs> Uh, but you can tube out there and get wet, you know, and that's not like you too like to far get wet, Jake. Town. I didn't know you like to get wet. But you it's know, a- one town that I haven't been to, it's been, I mean, I haven't been to in a hot minute is uh, the Salida Buena Vista area. And oh, that man. is fun. It is so great over there. And that was going to be on my short list as well since you took that one. But what is it? The Biker and the Baker. Unbelievable breakfast and lunch spots. And I feel like that uh, that BV, like that new old town they have, they have great food over there as well as they have kick-ass concerts. Like Billy Strings obviously does his summer run yeah. through there. But the rafting over there with Brown, the Brown and Numbers being two great rafting spots. I mean, it's perfect time to get down there. That's and that a great one's not a bad drive. No, and there's actually a lot of great eats over there. Like BV and Salida are a lot of fun. That's a good call. Yeah. And since That's- you stole mine, I like that your call. This is going to be a little bit of a longer trek. It's going to have to be the Grand Junction Palisade community. Obviously, people go out there for the wine scene in Palisade. Shout out to Salvage and Ordinary Fellow, two great wineries making kick ass fresh natty juices. But then 707, Josh Nirenberg's location, he's a highly regarded chef, used to be right here on the front range. His restaurant out there, Ben 707, is fucking spectacular. That and Pesh are solid one-two punches for the Western Slope dining scene. Like, they have elevated it to where you don't have to be in one of those bougie mountain towns, you know, like ski towns, to get that upper echelon of dank-ass food. Like, that's another great spot out there. It is a little warmer because you, I mean, they catch the heat just like we do here on the Front Range. But at the same time, what better way to knock it back than with some, you know, Stomping on grapes over at Salvage, swing by Ordinary Fellow, hit up the food truck, and then have dinner at Ben 707 in Grand Junction or Pesh in Palisade. Cannot recommend those enough. Yeah, I that's another area I haven't been out to in a, You really got to check area. it out because you're, you're a Vino, you're an Onophile yourself. So yeah. I think you'd really like it. And that, that area has really kind of come into their own. It's no longer blackberry wines only. Like folks have found out which grapes really play to that climate, that elevation yeah. and all of that. And so with that, it pairs beautifully with great food over there. So that, those are some solid recommendations. Now you have me wanting to go down and go rafting again. Yeah. I know we really need to. I went earlier in the summer, but I didn't do I did kind of more of that all in one inclusion spot where the food wasn't it was just kind of more casual, you know, barbecue and staying when, in the yurt. When does the rafting season kind of end? When the water gets bone chillingly cold. I would say probably late September. Okay. But at the same time, like it kind of is like it's peaking here now yeah. when the snow is all melted and running off. So you have those rapids. But at the same time, I think you can do it. And especially for folks that like to fish, like float and fish, right. you can go all the way till November, December. Just it's Maybe, just we, maybe we go bit. rafting for my 40th. I don't know if they allow senior citizens to do it as much as they used You'd to. You probably get a so. discount. Eve, would you come? <laughs> she won't even go to the fucking movies with us, Chris. Why would she go <laughs> rafting with us? Maybe. Really? We got a maybe. We got a maybe. I'll take it. Okay. That's practically a yes. Yeah, or a no. Um, but at the same time, those are a couple spots that you can beat the heat with dank eats, outdoor activities, and obviously some great juice. Um, if you're looking for a place to grab weed on your way out, our friends over at the dispensary have locations littered across the mountains and 
in the uh, along the front range as well. I hit up the one in Dillon before we played golf in Keystone, and I know they have one in Littleton as well. They have one in Boulder on your way up to Lyons, and then they have them spread out throughout the mountains as well, so give them a shout. And honestly, if you are a small business owner and you're like, how do these fuckers have the free time to go gallivant around the state? It's because we've offloaded some of the stuff that makes our jobs a little bit more difficult on to our friends over at Seed Money Consulting. Seed Money Consulting is there for those that are in the small business space that are maybe wearing too many hats. If you're wearing all the hats for your small business, reach out to our friends at Seed Money Consulting. Let them help with the books. Let them help with your taxes. Let them help make sure your ducks are in a row so that you're not eating a big bill come March. They'll make sure everything is copacetic throughout the year and to make sure that you have the freedom and the financial freedom to get up into the mountains and have a little fun this summer. Eve, how'd we do on the podcast? Pretty good. We had good banter. We talked a little bit about everything and anything. Anything we missed, Chris? Mm-hmm. You, didn't, you didn't see fireworks? You didn't go see a show? No, I'm not, I'm not a big firework person. It's not like yeah. I served overseas and have PTSD, but as someone who has a lot of old dogs, it just, yeah, it, they, just, they're not a fan. And then the cunts that shoot them off on the second and the third because they have them already, or the cocksuckers that do it on the fifth and the sixth because they didn't bust their nut on the fourth, <laughs> those people piss me off because it pisses my dogs off. Yeah. And I'm just out completely on fireworks. Like, I'm not necessarily saying that they're not aesthetically pleasing or that drone shows are fucking cool, but I'm just out on you pissing off my dogs. Like, that's the reason I hate fucking fireworks. And one of the main reasons I enjoy spending this weekend, either this past weekend, rather in the mountains. But if I can't be in the mountains, I'd rather be at home so that I can give them, you know, a little doggy Xanax or a nice pet CBD. Well, like, <clears throat> when did it, I mean, it's only on the 4th. Like, let's just shoot fireworks on the 4th. You don't need to do it on the 5th or on the 3rd, just the 4th. Yeah, fuck like, Wyoming for selling them to all these fucking losers. Um, also, this should be the last time you shoot them until New Year's Eve. Like, there is no holiday that you should, you, Labor Day is not a, a firework holiday. Like, when we get there, like, maybe if you're at the fish show, you'll see some fireworks. Maybe yeah. you eat enough LSD, everything's a firework. But otherwise, we should not hear a firework from now until New Year's. Everything should be gunshots only that scare the dogs. Where our house is, kind of, like, up on that hill, yeah, we yeah. could see, like, over, like, Littleton. I, th- I guess you it would probably be Littleton and, like, Inglewood and all those. That... That whole skyline over there was just popping off. And that's okay because we can't really, like, hear the booms. Yeah, in the distance. But that's then, fine. Like, I mean, and when I go to sleep, like, I can't hear shit. So I didn't hear it. But apparently, like, people around Sloan's Lake shooting off all those little things. I think it's kind of dickish to do it kept... after a certain time. Like, it was, I think it was done by, like, 11 by me, which I was like, that's nice of you guys. But I didn't hear any too late into the night, yeah, surprisingly. Yeah, stuff up all night. She uh, was not happy. Here's a question. Would you rather see people's videos from concerts or people's videos of fireworks? Fireworks. Because after the They're fucking Odessa shitty, but... concert, I felt like everybody and their mom was there and then posting it like as on their feed. And then it's in the same vein. It's like, I'm not reliving this experience with you. Like, I'm glad that you had fun, but like, just keep that one yeah, in your pocket. I mean, they all look shitty. Justice. Or like, videos. You have to yeah. There. yeah it's not videos all. as well. Like, after the fact, like in real time, you're like, oh, here's a banger. That's cool. Like story posts. But like, if you're posting them on the feed, it's in the same camp as fireworks. Like I find them both to be just like, no one's watching those. Like, fuck out of here. What do you um, think? Are you a fireworker or a concerter? No, I'd rather see a fireworks story, I guess, or a picture. Yeah. I mean, they all they all suck. Like, it's well, not going to do it justice. We turned on, we watched a little bit of the, like, New York fire show on the TV, but, like, watching oh that. God. No, I mean, we just had it on. We weren't, like. Like, New York City? Like, yeah. Oh, but, okay. I mean, like, watching those things on TV, it's not. It still doesn't do anything. Yeah, it doesn't. I mean, they, they look cool, and if you were there, I bet they're sure. awesome, because you can hear them go, Phoop. and then, you know, yeah. And they have just, like, you know, um. Just boats out there, fill, you know. I think we made fun of you for this last year, but you watch parades on television too, don't you? No, in the background on Thanksgiving, you have the Macy's Day Parade, <laughs> and I'm not the only person I think person we did it for the that. draft. He was like, yeah, that's a tradition that we always had. Uh, I just find that interesting. Do you ever watch, what was it, like the New Year's Eve countdowns? 
Like with back in the day, we did, didn't? I mean, like with Andy Cohen and them nowadays. I'll catch. I'll like fast forward it through things. <laughs> I love that you really. Chris is aging right here before my eyes. <laughs> It's like Dick Clark's hundred. Hey, he's fucking keeping years. them in business. They need that viewer. I was wondering who was watching those still. <laughs> they probably, I don't know. Maybe they rate pretty high. Maybe all the senior citizens watch it. I don't know. I don't know who their target audience is for people over sixty. Like Chris. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> That's uh, it for this week. We've got another episode for y'all Thursday. We're back on our normal regimen. Tuesday, Thursday until we die, and then we're done. <laughs> uh, until next episode, y'all stay high, stay hungry. No more fireworks. Hot dogs. Cheers! Cheers.